Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today I want to do a first impressions and a little bit of a review overview of the Stenopeica camera we have here. This is the Hyper Camera 4x5 Butterfly Wings Mark III Advanced. First thing I would recommend is the name should be a little simpler because I just have to read that off my phone, but the camera has a lot of features and that's why it's trying to differentiate from different models. The hyper cameras in the Stenopeica are the more affordable options and uh, Samuele, who is the maker of these cameras, sent me this unit for review and testing. Uh, there's no involvement on him about what I say about the camera. You actually will see that I have a couple issues with how it works uh, after using it a couple of days. I haven't fully tested it out. I haven't gone out. I've t shot a couple of studio shots with strobes and FP100C to check how it all worked. Uh, so far, everything's gone well, but there's a couple things. Let's start with the specs. So the Stenopeica Hyper Advanced Butterfly Wings are because of the bottom part of the camera have butterfly wings into them. It's made out of plywood, metal, and a couple knobs are probably plastic and such. Hardware is silver, camera's painted black, so it's applied wood with black. Focusing's done with uh, rails that very much seem like, uh, like um, cupboard rails. So kind of like your kitchen kind of cupboards and all that, like the, you know, the drawer rails. So they're sort of sharp on the corners, so you gotta be careful because they will give you a little cut. I've actually almost cut my fingers a couple of times, but if you're careful, you're not gonna have a problem. So specs are, it has rise and fall for three centimeters. So you let go here and you can rise and fall. And actually I removed the locking here, which is under. So you can see rise and fall. So there's like that much. And if I put these in, it can fall even more. So these are in here, but then there's one knob for both rise and fall and tilt, as you can see. So tilt is basically, um, you know, limited by the bellows. So you can tilt as much as you want, but the bellows will not let you do more or less depending on how compressed the bellows are. The bellows actually are interchangeable, which is a great feature that we don't see in other affordable cameras like the Intrepid, they're magnetic. So you have to pull them up a little bit. So you have to hold the bellows a little bit and pull them. And there you go, magnetic bellows, which is pretty cool. And then to put it back on, you just get it close, boom, it snaps on, snaps on. This magnet is not gonna pop off. I've been using the camera fully extended, doing macro work, no problem. So it does work very well. And you can probably use back bellows that uh, Samuel from Stenopeka supplies. Then we have uh, the tilt or swing, what I call swing on the front. So it has a center axis, so you can't shift it but you can swing it sideways, which is nice. And when you want to zero it, you just have to align the back and tighten those knobs. As I said, these knobs are all very utilitarian. They don't seem like specific for camera work, but they work great for what they do. Then you have these little knobs here, which will let you do base tilt. So you can go backwards or forwards. And there you go. That's when you limit the bellows so much but we are limited because we are pulling as far back as we can. But that works fine and it snapped into place right now. Uh, the lens board is actually Linhoff style. So as you can see here, you can unlock it and change the lens board. Uh, it has two different locking mechanisms, one on the bottom, one on the top. I do seem to find that the lens board wiggles a little bit and you probably can notice that on the B cam and I'll show a detail, but this is not optimal. You could probably give a bit more pressure to these little screws and this would adjust a little better. But this is a Nikon uh, lens board and actually it has that little space. I haven't tried with Linhoff ones or um, other brands, but this one has that little bit of wiggle that doesn't happen in other cameras like the Chamonix I own. Then if we move to the back, uh, let me see how you guys can see that. If we move to the back, you can see there's the ground glass. It has etchings for medium format and then every centimeter. There we go. You have your ground glass. As I said, it's etched, which is really nice. It does have a Fresnel. So for wide angle lenses or certain occasions, it's really helpful. Uh, it does have graph lock. So you basically can lift this up 
and it's not as easy as it seems because you want to do both sides. You can take off the ground glass and then you have, of course, just a hole and you can use medium format backs or Polaroid backs and lock them with this graph lock system, as you can see here. Uh, when I used uh, Polaroid backs like the FP100C, these, one of them does seem to work fine and the other one's a little too tight. So you have to kind of like wiggle it, give it a bit of pressure. So instead of moving forward, it moves a bit of an angle. But apart from that, it's been fine. And then to put it back on, you kind of have to lift it a little bit, but then you have to lift the other side too. So a little bit here, a little bit, or you can just push it in and there it goes. One thing I did notice that it can be an issue and it happens with the Intrepid 2 is the focusing screen, as you can see, doesn't really sit against the camera. I guess the, the you know, spring back doesn't push it as much. So when you're focusing, you want to grab your loop and push the back of the screen. If not, there's a bit of wiggle there. And I'll show a different angle so you can, guys can see it. Then the back also has swing. And uh, let me um, get a little bit less bellows extension so the bellows don't pop off. But you can see you've got swing here, probably around 30 degrees, maybe a little less. And when you want to put it flush, there is zero position. There's no raise or no shift on the back, but that's fine on a like field camera. The back can go, you see, there we go, bellows popped. I am telling you, bellows will pop if you're pushing the limit. So with long lenses and very crazy movements, which is something you usually don't do, they could pop. Um, so this will go backwards or forwards and it has a zeroing position, which is fairly nice. It has a little, little thing there that will lock it into zero. So you can put it at zero. Then it does have a bubble level here and a bubble level here and one on the side. I have noticed though that the bubble level on this side can move a little. And when it moves a little, the back seems to like stay attached and I, don't fairly like that. Um, I don't know if this whole back rotates. I don't think it does. I don't really know how to do that. Okay. The whole back can rotate, but you have to pull it out magnetically once again, and then flip it around. And there you can shoot your uh, landscape pictures. Uh, basically, you put your finger in here and apply pressure it comes off and there's magnets under this little felt which is nice but here you can see what i was mentioning how the back kind of like doesn't have that spring loadedness oh there we go i guess something hadn't gone into place but now it's flush which is fine oh that fixed it so bubble levels everywhere which is really nice uh the movement focusing on the rear is basically let me move it so you guys can see it uh focusing is done through this little knob so you can focus forward till it basically touches the screw or you can focus backwards and one thing you have to keep in mind when you're focusing backwards is it will let you release the screw out of its housing so if i keep on going and keep on going and keep on going and keep on going the whole screw will get out of this housing over here and that's something you want to prevent. So try to remember to stop around there and you should be good. The front has uh, also extension. So the front standard, there's a little knob on the downwards here and then you can move it and it can get really close if you want to use like wide angle kind of shots and that would be wide angle-ish. Let me see if you guys can see that. So I'm going to compress the bellows as much as we can. I'm housing a 210 millimeters right now. So this is not something you would do with a 210, but if you want to shoot with a 90 or 72 or something like that, probably a 90 would work like this. I wouldn't think a 90, uh, 72 might work. Uh, you want to check max and min bellows just in case, but yeah, it works. The only thing, as I said, these little, um, rails are sharp and you can cut them also if you bang them probably they wouldn't be very good for the camera then it does come with a little protector so the camera is supplied with a little wood protector that has some magnets which is really nice you just kind of like put it over doesn't hit having the intrepid uh this usually comes kind of like just on top not 
magnetized. So that's really nice. And yeah, I don't know how much more you guys want to know. I will be comparing it to an Intrepid and a Chamonix and a standard camera. But this camera, this price is 497 euros uh, without that. So you have to add taxes, which in Italy, if I'm not wrong, is a 22%. And if you're out of the European Union, like the England, you don't have to pay that, but maybe you have to pay import uh, duties. So just bear in mind with the price. It's made in Italy, which is pretty cool. Uh, another European camera. I kind of like the fact that there's more European makers at the time. And then folding it, let me show you guys how to fold it because it's kind of cool how it folds. Let me see if I can see what I'm doing there. You guys see it there. Okay. So to fold it, we take off the lens, of course. And then you kind of like take this off. You can have to unlock the bottoms and then you just basically fold it down. Doo -doop. Let me see. You want to rise as much as you can. There we go. And then this goes down too. There we go. So that's how you fold it. I haven't done it plenty of times, so that's why you can tell I was kind of concerned what I was doing. But this camera is extremely lightweight and extremely uh, small. Let me see if I can grab it in my hands. You guys can see how lightweight it is and small it can be. Basically, this is the width of my hand and you can see how small it is. So yeah, this is the Stenopeka. I have a bottom plate, which is a Manfrotto bottom plate for the tripod head, but this is around a kilo and a bit. Uh, you can check the website. I'll leave the link below. But yeah, if you're into uh, four by five cameras, you want a field camera made brand new today and you want to buy European, I think Stenopega is a great option. I do find the choice of hardware and the rough edges are a little bit not my, you know, style, but uh you know for the price which is around 600 euros it's not bad considering that the next step up probably would be like a chamonix or a shenhao camera or any other second hand which i won't get into right now uh but it could be a good option i will be putting it through its paces letting you guys know how it holds on so far i've told you a couple issues the focusing issue uh, it seems like i hadn't put these two guides properly in uh but now it's been fixed and there's no movement whatsoever there but it's good to know that these little levers can hold, you know, the back incorrectly if you don't have it in the right space. One thing to notice is you won't be able to put a pouring back with the spring, so it won't open that much. It does let me do that with my Chamonix. I haven't tried with the Intrepid, but uh, with my Chamonix, it will let me, which is nice. I don't have to remove the back unless I want to shoot like 6x12 or 6x7 or 6x9 with a horseman back. So yeah, guys, that's the intro overview of the Stenopeka Hyper 4x5 Butterfly Wings Mark III Advanced. Um, it's a big name for a small camera. And I really like the black finish. When it came out of the box, it had a bit of a smell of paint, but it's gone away basically in a couple of days. So yeah, guys, any questions, doubts, anything you want to know about this camera, just let me know. In the comments below i'll be happy to compare it. if you want to see architecture portraiture studio photography anything like that just let me know i'll be happy to shoot color black and white whatever you guys want i'll do it so yeah guys thanks for watching and thanks samuel from stuff for sending this over to test it out and give you guys an impressions on the camera see you in the next one guys